Hello and welcome to the Connection webinar series. We're recording the second track of week two and uh, the second session is focused on uh, why does digital seem to stop at printing? So I'm joined today by uh, four uh, professionals from within the industry. Uh, delighted to welcome um, Jan de Rook from ESCO and uh, Aitan Varon from Hikon. We've got Steve Willis from KiwiPlan, and we've got Vim Koenig from Macarbox. So gentlemen, thank you so much indeed for, uh, for joining us. Um, as I said, we really want to start looking at um, what's happening in terms of digitalization of uh, what it, we all know is a, a very analog industry. Um, so, Jan, I'd like to come to you first, uh, please, if I may, because um, I think it's safe to say that uh, in terms of the digital transformation of any analog business, uh, that workflow is probably one of the most critical functions. Would you agree? Well, uh, yeah, by all means, uh, yes. Uh, certainly, if we if we look at more specifically the pre-press part within that workflow, uh, it's very very fair to say that that must have probably been the uh, the part of the of, of, of what we do in in the packaging business that has been most impacted by uh, IT technologies, and even the advent uh, years back of uh, desktop publishing was already a very first big transformation of the industry, and it really hasn't stopped since then. We have been continuing been uh, adopting new technologies, um, digitizing data exchange, uh, deploying uh, digital technologies to do the job which we in the past called uh, stripping film. And um, workflow to that extent is, is kind of um, a kind of a two-faced um, uh, word because we all use workflows. Right? Even in the even in the past when everything was analog, we also had a workflow, right? But um, the whole point of, of this digital era and digital transformation is that if we would look at our workflows today and analyze how we transform, how we, how we transport data from one step in the workflow to the next one, um, uh, there is so much opportunity today to look at where we create waste. And digital technologies give us so much opportunity to do a better job, a more efficient job. So from a workflow perspective, digital transformation, if you ask me, has only started, really. And, and Jan, um, you know, digital really in terms of, um, you know, this whole conversation that we're looking at, it, it is actually uh, a bit of a mindset change. Um, how, how are you as an organization working with your customers to try and influence that, that, that mindset change? Because, you know, it's a very um, sort of conservative industry. Um, the corrugated sector doesn't really like much change. Um, how are you helping address and educate uh, to get that mindset changed? Well, it is indeed, as you say, uh, Dan, very much a uh, very much a mindset, and we we see that um, across uh, all of our customers, um, people and businesses are in very different and distinct mindsets. And I always look at um, uh, at digital transformation as as a journey, really. I mean, there's, there's there's not something that you deploy like overnight. And so the the big question is for for many. Um, businesses uh, in the packaging sector is where are they in their journey of digital transformation? And what does it take them in terms of investments, in terms of efforts, in terms of mindset change to move to the next stage, if you like, of, of digital transformation? One of the things we did to help them out is we, we, we looked at our entire um, customer database and we, we basically came up with a maturity model. We're all trying to get grip of um, of digital transformation and and uh, one way of doing that is to deploy a maturity model where people can actually assess themselves um, come up with a good idea of where they are in that journey um, and then basically get tips and tricks of how to move to the to the next uh, step our our digital maturity model has five distinct uh, stages of digital maturity most of our customers are in the, the lower three stages at this moment in time. But uh, it's a great way of, uh, of any business in, in packaging to figure out where they are, because that is absolutely crucial 
to um, determine what would be the logical next step into moving further digitally, further transforming your uh, your business. Okay, um, Aitan, I'd like to come to you, please, if I may. Um, Aitan from Haikon, um, uh, well-known um, Israeli manufacturer and developer of uh, of systems that are um, digitally cutting uh, and and creasing. And um, I'd like to talk about because uh, obviously, you know, Israel is is a hotbed of um, uh, technological development uh, when you look at. You know some of the the big inkjet um, uh, developments that have come from there, and and you've helped really um, lead the charge in terms of the digitalization of traditional analog converting processes. Um, tell us a little bit about how um, you know how you've actually managed to uh, work with customers to to um, utilize this technology. Um, particularly, as, as we were saying earlier, it, it's such an analog industry, uh, and we're taking a process. Uh, it's a complete mindset change. Um, so, so how are you um, handling that process of change? Dan, I think it's really a great question, and you're absolutely right. Israel is such a big hub uh, of, of digital technology that came from here, both in the pre-press, printing, textile and other industry, as, as probably you know. And certainly we are here in ICON, are proud to be part of this uh, generally and leading a disruptive technology. And to your question, I think that this is really something that we are investing a lot as a company. We look at it as what I would say 360. It's actually starting with even getting filed through the web, through a cloud-based systems, web to pack and other means, allowing customers to play with files on the web, sending those files, whether to the ERP system of the organization or directly to our machine, and then produce the product and then send it, uh, send it to their customer. And the way we see it is really the industry is really transforming. And by the way, I think that the moving from uh, multi-pass technology in printing into the single-pass technology, allowing the uh, allowing their customer to manufacture much, in much more efficient way on digital printing device, create a bottleneck in the finishing process, and certainly create also a demand on the way from the uh, uh, from their customer. Now they would like to produce what they want to get it when they need it. They don't want to create stock and they want to rely on a, on a, on a, a, a cloud and a, I would say on the a, on a, a, on a plat on platform that are completely uh, uh, completely uh, digital. And I think that this is part of the journey. When you have when you have uh, uh, tools that allow customers to manage their file and to manage their ERP system on a digital way, and then you have a digital printing system, and you have, of course, a digital finishing system, you basically complete the revolution. And I think that this is a very, very important, uh, a very, very important part. Uh, I will add to that that as part of the uh, of the uh, tools that we provide our customer, we give them uh, uh, online information about the uh, the way that the operator are running the machine, whether it was on the first shift or on the first shift or the second shift, we. Uh, actually send them all the time information how they can improve production, how they can improve the utilization. We send them back a data about their uh, about their gem rate and and other production uh, and other production uh, 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 information that are, is very very important, and all that actually lead to a digital revolution. Now, if I am a, a, if I am a, a, a corrugated uh, a producer and I have a digital printing machine, and I have a digital finishing machine, and I have a ERP system, and I'm getting my, my files from the web, I can actually give my customer, whether it's PNG or Mondelez or all the others, I can give them an, a, a real answer. I can produce the, the uh, I can produce the, for them on demand exactly what they need. We don't need to create stock, and we can deliver just on time. Mm -hmm. um, Steve, I think one thing that has become very loud and clear in this conversation, it, it's talking about um, data and data management. Um, I know that your organization has been doing a lot of work uh, in terms of um, interfacing with, with various uh, equipment manufacturers. But um, 
tell us a little bit about why why you feel that um, that integration with MIS and um, you know the ERP solutions. You know, why is um, pulling data from machines so critical? Oh, Steve's muted at the moment. Just one second. And then I've, I've, I've unmuted it. There we go. <laughs> okay, okay uh, Steve. Thanks for, the thanks for the question, Dan. Um, yeah, it, it's an interesting question. And uh, because um, we believe that there's absolutely a uh, place in our industry for the digital and analog processes. And, and as, a, as a result, they totally complement each other. So the result of that is that it, that can add complexity to the process. And we've found that often um, due consideration is not necessarily given to how various systems play together. Um, and so uh, with digitalization, some areas become more complex and, and others less so. So um, from my perspective, I, I come from an MIS background, so I'll try to stick to the, the MIS side of things. Um, we find that you know, we have found and we think we will continue to see that the, uh, the packaging manufacturers will have a, a mixture of, of machines, digital and analog. And what they really require from the MIS solution is that they require us help them to make good business decisions. They shouldn't have to be making them themselves if they make themselves. So in order for that to happen, um, the system needs to be aware of the various processes in the factory, uh, and they also needs to be aware of, of how uh, particular orders can go through uh, multiple different ways they can go through. So some key factors that uh, we think uh, need to be considered by the MIS are things like um, when things need to with the customers, uh, the the quality of the print and the cuts can vary on equipment. Uh, quantity you know, is it a small order size, is it a large order size? Are there multiple deliveries as, as possibilities? And obviously, things like the cost of production are also uh, key factors as well. So, all of these are important, and it's really key that the MIS needs to consider these, and provide the best routing with the uh, least cost to the organisation, and fits the purpose of the requirement. Of the so once the route's been agreed, uh, the MIS needs to support the other processes that are involved. So uh, an MIS is, is not going to do the whole job by itself. It needs to make sure that it's communicating with all the different other systems out there. Uh, so for example, the, the art and design systems are a very key part of the, world, part of the, the workflow we've talked about before. Uh, and there needs to be a seamless transfer of data between the systems. Another area that it hasn't often been considered uh, as seriously as it probably should be, is that the MIS needs to interface very, very closely with the production machinery in these plants. So you know, we, we need the capability to be able to download, set up, and, uh, and order information to the equipment, um, to the printers and, and cutters, uh, and, and we also need to be able to upload information uh, about the production from these pieces of equipment as well. So uh, a key for that as well is not just downloading and uploading. Uploading particularly needs to be real-time. The reason why it needs to be real-time is because the manufacturing plants are very, very dynamic environments. A lot of uh, important decisions need to be made, and it needs to have the most up-to-date information to allow it to do that intelligently. As well as that, um, we also have the, the shipping operation, which we need to make sure is as efficiently, as effectively as possible operating. And throughout all of these various processes, there's a huge amount of data, particularly in the world of, of digital, uh, that can be collected. And, and it's really important that the MIS is collecting that because uh, it's not only the current one that's important, we also need to be looking at future ones and learning from what has just happened to make sure that what we're doing going forward is optimised uh, to, to the benefit of the customer. Thank you, Steve. Um, <laughs> Vim, I'd, I'd like to come to you, please. Um, there was quite an interesting um, uh, concept that Steve put forward there in terms of when we look at the traditional box plant uh, that has a combination of um, digital uh, print and now cutting um, and the analog uh, printing and cutting and folding and gluing. Um, obviously, uh, do you see that 
the digital processes uh, are very much a complementary process to to traditional analog. So, in other words, enables a, a plant to to move maybe the short run onto digital to allow more time on your traditional <clears throat> flexor folder gluers and your traditional rotary die cutters. Well, that's exactly what is. Let's say that's part of our company presentation. Then, so uh, <laughs> well done. Um, we really see it like this. We don't see it as competition. Um, if you look to most box plants, um, they have all a portfolio of a number of jobs they do every day or every month, every week for the customer. But all of them have jobs. They normally, if they had a choice, they would not do it on analog. More and more jobs of these plants have more make ready time than, 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 than running time, sheets on the floor. So if you take out, let's say 10% of all the jobs and you bring them to digital, then you have a win-win situation. You'll have more profit because you can do it digitally and you have more efficiently, efficiency on your analog systems because these analog systems, nobody is waiting for for the running a job where the running time is, is 20 minutes and the make-ready time is half an hour. So there is a win-win if you combine the technologies. And I see now more and more companies getting convinced about, about that. Your first question of the question of the whole meeting here is, of course, why does digital stop at printing? Um, and then I think that especially the corrugated industry is in a different phase than other parts of the graphic arts industry. In the corrugated industry, for instance, digital printing is, is not very familiar. Not every company has digital printing. You do have uh, multi-pass multi -pass systems, but you only have a few single-pass systems, and they have not been around for many, for many years. So many plants are still looking, am I going to invest in UV-based, water-based, uh, let's let's see let's wait and see what is happening and in the meantime they're starting to to look into digital finishing because they do have short runs already they still finish them analog but they can create a win-win situation if they can finish them digitally and i see that really more and more companies uh, uh, getting convinced about that and some of them are not waiting until they do digital printing mm -hmm. Um, Aitan, uh, can, can I come back to you now, please? Because I think um, it, it's very interesting when we look at the uh, relative uh, speeds and outputs of digital devices. Um, they are slower than uh, traditional analog uh, equipment and processes. Um, but obviously, they, they actually fit quite nicely together. So um, the speed that you guys are able to um, digitally cut uh, are starting to now match uh, the speeds with which it's being digitally printed. So you're creating uh, almost like a, a, a complete ecosystem. Um, but what do you think is the next step? Because obviously, uh, in terms of, you know, we, we've printed the box, we've cut the shape, we've creased it now, uh, but we still need to finish that box and we need to fold it and glue it. I mean, wh wh what do you see as the, as the future in that area? Well, certainly uh, you are absolutely right. I think that there are few direction. One of them is, is, is indeed, as you mentioned, maybe going downstream into the uh, uh, into the uh, folding and gluing machine and make them digital. That's one direction. Other direction and, and, and question that we are getting from our customer is to combine the printing and the, uh, and, the, uh, and the cutting and creasing device together. And this is also a very interesting approach because as you, as you just said, the relatively, uh, I would say, speed become very, very uh, close. At the moment we are running at 4,000 sheets per hour which is, very, which is relatively almost as a standard die cutting machine of, of Bob's or, or other uh, uh, die cutting. So now the question is coming, why not to combine and instead of moving the, uh, the sheets from one device to the other, maybe let's have a one device that will print and cut together. I will improve my efficiency. So we do see from the customer, I would say, a question about 
this direction, the one that you mentioned, going into the folding and gluing, make it digital, or maybe go into the printing device and combine it together with uh, with cutting and creasing. This is a, so, so uh, I would say it's a little bit maybe, uh, 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 it's, it's maybe we are now just, I would say, entering into the revolution. So we don't know exactly what will take uh, or what will take uh, uh, which which direction will 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 uh, uh, will go uh, uh, will go to speed faster but this is a uh, this is really uh, uh, the direction that we see and again when you move to digital you open a completely new era of opportunities and that's what we learn from our customer it's not only about digital printing and digital finishing it's about your production capabilities. It's about supply chain. It's about getting new jobs. It's about it's about produce on demand. It's about moving to the web. We see actually what happened now with COVID nineteen. The uh, e commerce is growing very very fast. The online business is growing very very fast. So okay, how do I how do I uh, actually answer the need of my customer? We know that actually under COVID-19, many of the company have limitation. They couldn't suddenly produce their die cutting tools, the rotary die cutting. Now, if I have the capability to do it, uh, to do it uh, exactly on my manufacturing plate, I don't rely anymore on the uh, on the die cutting factory, and that's it. I, I have an answer to my customer. I can produce exactly what I need. So we do see that the the uh, the move to digital. Certainly, on the area of finishing and also in the future into folding and gluing, will create a complete transfer of the industry, as you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, Jan, uh, I can see you uh, raising a finger there. Uh, I'm sure you want to jump in there because I, I actually also want to ask you, Jan, very specifically: um, uh, is is when we start looking at uh, the concepts that Itan was talking about there in terms of you know, effectively web to pack. Um, you know, the box industry has got to do quite a lot of changing to to, to understand how uh, the complete uh, ecosystem of data and data management, how to handle it. Yeah, that is that's definitely a, a fact. I, I just I just before before I go there, let me um, go back to what Ethan was saying about uh, about e-commerce and. You know um, that, um, well, ultimately, if, if you produce packaging, packaging is a physical object. So we will always have uh, physical manipulation and analog technology to, to, to produce and manufacture those as part of the workflow steps. Um, but uh, this, whole, this whole adventure towards more e-commerce uh, and this surge under the impact of, uh, of the COVID pandemic uh, going towards e-commerce also uh, creates an interesting problem for the, the brands that want to put their products for sale on e-commerce platforms. And that is that where do they get the information from to show that product virtually on the website? Where do the product images come from? Where do the, um, the information about the project that is pre- uh, presented uh, in an e-commerce platform, where does that come from? Um, and I think that there is a huge opportunity for um, packaging converters there, because if you really think about it, who owns the, uh, the data that is the ultimate uh, truth uh, in here? Um, it may not even be the brand owner, but it is for sure the packaging converter that produced the box. They have all the data that is a, a, what we call in the industry a digital twin of the physical pack. Uh, so there is a great opportunity there for converters to also help their brand owners with uh, get, providing them with the, the accurate and exact information to populate their e-commerce uh, pages, whether if that is through retailers or through uh, brand-owned uh, e-commerce channels. It doesn't really matter. It is the converter that owns the um, the, the actual uh, single source of truth uh, data, and there's a big opportunity there uh, from a uh, from a uh, yeah from a business perspective also. Um, and now I completely forgot the uh, the first question uh, that uh, that you were asking me. Uh, so if you can help me bring me back on the rails there, that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, Jan. So, so sorry, I, I was going to um, uh, move uh, the conversation towards you, just in terms of, 
you know, we're talking about, you know, the web to pack concept and, you know, control of that data. Um, how, how are you helping uh, your customers um, uh, grapple with, with the change that's required in terms of, you know, industry 4.0? We're trying to automate as much as we can, um, but we're still a very conservative industry, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and that, that conservative nature of, of the industry is, is, is like a really very, very uh, apparent in the uh, at the very start of the workflow, right? you would you you would think that uh, acquiring a job and, and collecting all the necessary data from the brand in order to start producing the job that that would be quite well covered, but that's probably the space where we see most of the analog technology still being used today. And with analog, I mean um, um, picking up the phone and calling somebody. Uh, if, if the converter does not have the right uh, ingredient copy or not the right logo or they're missing some item of the specification, they w what happens is they pick up the phone and actually call the brand to actually get that information and chase that information. And this is where um, we, uh, as suppliers to the industry, we can, we can really make a big, big difference in, um, in developing web-based platforms for collaboration making sure that uh, indeed MIS systems where the specification of the job is being um, uh, captured and recorded to integrate that with the prepress workflow to further automate these processes. And, and this is true digital disruption in, in, in a field where uh, account managers and, and customer service representatives are chasing customers with the with phone. Uh, this, is a, this is a place, uh, this is an area of opportunity again. Um, Steve, uh, something interesting that Jan mentioned there uh, in terms of um, dumping the orders into the MIS, um, it obviously creates a lot of disruption when you're trying to handle lots and lots and lots of small orders and short runs, et cetera. Um, and I know, Steve, that, that, that your organization has installed um, uh, MIS software solutions at um, some companies who are successfully using digital print. Um, but it, obviously, it creates a, um, a scheduler's nightmare, doesn't it? Um, trying to automate these processes because traditionally they are very—they uh, like to be in control of the process. They're always thinking about, you know, what uh, what grades are running on the corrugator. Um, so your experience of, of of working with these organizations who are using digital print successfully, do they tend to be smaller organizations? You know, really agile organizations, or are you also seeing it in the big? Um, you know, multinational integrated companies? Yeah, so what we're seeing uh, to date is more, more in the smaller companies. Um, you know, as we've heard a few times from my colleagues already, our, our industry is kind of a, a bit of a dinosaur industry, and we, we struggle to make change in some way. I think that the smaller organisations tend to be more agile or more open to see what the opportunities are out there. Um, but, but from the perspective of order size, you know, if things are being done manually through the MIS, it absolutely is, is a bigger problem, creates a headache. But your, your MIS should be able to handle whether it's 10 orders or whether it's 1,000 orders. An order is an order. Um, and as long as the, the information that goes in is accurate, then there shouldn't really be too many major concerns from the MIS about how it will handle it, and making sure it's streamlining it. I touched on it before, things like the due date, as long as the key information is accurate, the MIS will handle it no problem at all. Okay, um, thank you, Steve. Um Vim, I'm going to come to you now with, with possibly um a slightly bizarre question. Um but when we start looking at the new machinery that is um, digitally printing or digitally cutting and creasing. Um, we're talking about uh, machinery that effectively is being run by an iPad, a tablet. Um, do you see, um, is it becoming appealing now to the younger generation who um, traditionally would never look at the corrugated industry because we were an old fashioned, slow, dirty industry? Um, digital print, digital finishing, um, it starts to become a bit more sexy. Um, so do you think this is good for, for the next generation of operator in the, the modern corrugated box plants? I'm sure, I'm sure it is, because what I see happening, and I also saw that years ago when I was at, uh, at HICOM, uh, Eaton, that um, if you 
if you're looking for successes of your company, then for many young people, packaging, corrugated is not very sexy. Um, especially not with the, with the analog systems. I see that uh, converters getting more and more, find it more and more difficult to, f to find good operators. Um, and if you replace a few of these machines with digital, with laser cutting devices like Heiko, like, like Macrobox, it's easier to get people to get operators because the younger people find it sexy, literally. And they can say when they are at a birthday party, they can say they handle a laser operated machine. Yeah, that's much cooler than the tra traditional machine. So I'm sure it really helps. I'm, I'm, and I remember, Ethan, there was a, um, a former customer in, from Heiko in the past that bought a digital press or digital Heiko because of his successor, his son and his daughter. I think it was in Vietnam, uh, Ethan. Ethan is oh, sorry, mute, um, I think. Let's, Ethan, let's, let's just get your mic back on. Uh, Ethan, please. Yes, so, so I think that referring to Wim, what we see is actually two trends, and this is very, very interesting, because many of those businesses, they are family-owned business, and then when the father would like the, uh, uh, his son or daughter to go into the business, the, the, uh, the young generation, and he showed them the analog device, they are not interesting to come. But then when, he spoke, when he's talking with them about digital, uh, web to pack and other, and other solutions that are interesting in terms of, of the ability to do customization and creativity, suddenly they want to jump into the business. So we have, I would say, two trends. One, as, as we mentioned, that you see that the young generation is really fun about new digital technologies. And the other trend is, as you mentioned, the, uh, we know that to, uh, uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, we just finished uh, an installation uh, in, in the UK uh, with one, uh, with a very big uh, uh, company. And uh, within two weeks, the operator was running the machine by itself. That's it. And we were out of the, out of the site. Imagine how much it will take you to, to uh, train a box operator or a big Komori press operator. It's sometimes months or years. So it's completely a game changer. And, uh, and, and as we mentioned, indeed, the young generation, when you ask them to come and run the, uh, the, the, the big analog device, they're not interesting. But then when, the, when, when you ask them or you uh, uh, give them the challenge to run a digital machine. It's a completely, it's a completely different story. So I totally agree with the, with what we just mentioned. Yeah. And, and, and do you feel though that, um, that that also with the technology now, because of the inference of the fact that it's digital, uh, in other words, it's setting itself up. It's it's taking a stored job parameter. Um, do you, do you feel that? Um, Almost, we're in an era where we're struggling to recruit skilled operators. Do you think digital gives us an operation, an opportunity um, to really showcase what packaging can do? Absolutely, this is absolutely true statement, uh, uh, Dan. And and actually, uh, we have uh, one of our customer, Winget, in the US, and he told me that uh, he, he tried to recruit an operator and he posted a job and nobody answered. And then he said that he uh, that this is for a digital machine and immediately he got an answer that someone wants to come. So yeah, it's, it's you know, nobody, it's a problem. It's look like sometimes an old industry and, uh, and, uh, and you need to give the uh, young generation something that will really make it attractive. And with digital machine, there is a challenge. You can do new things. You are uh, entering into a, a new uh, business. You uh, provide different uh, type of solutions. So I think it's completely, uh, it's completely a true statement, yes. Good. Well, um, gentlemen, we've, um, we've racked up almost 35 minutes here having a, um, a fantastic futuristic look at uh, where we're all heading. Um, so I, I'd like to thank each of you uh, for, for some very um, valid input. Uh, I think just to summarize uh, the, the importance of um, data, the importance of data within the workflow, uh, how we're operating our businesses,
the opportunity that web to pack is giving us uh, as as possibly smaller organizations uh, to, to grow your business, uh, to, to be able to interact with um, uh, influencers through uh, through Instagram and TikTok that, uh, you know, are, are giving opportunities to produce on demand, very, very short run. Uh, but obviously, all of the logistical headaches that it's going to give uh, a traditional uh, converting uh, organization um, and the importance of, of looking after your data and making sure that the MIS is um, still in the driving seat, uh, enabling you to run your business successfully and profitably. So, gentlemen, thank Thank you so much indeed. It's been fascinating. Um, I know that um, all of you uh, are going to be on the virtual show floor. Uh, so I'm sure anyone who's been listening uh, to this webinar, uh, please do go and find each of the gentlemen on the various booths around the show. So gentlemen, thank you so much indeed. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the showgrounds. Thanks very much.